Okay, I had a speech I was doing for last year graduating, and I would like to present it to you now. Even the most barren of refrigerators have a lingering bottle that clatters with the whoosh of an open door. It's a hero of American condiments. Ketchup! <laughs> Says Natural Geographic in a published article talking about the history of the most famous condiment in the world. In the same article, it says that 97% of Americans have a bottle in their fridge right now. It's undeniable that there's nothing more American than guns, hats, and a good old American burger at a 4th of July barbecue. But a burger isn't a burger without ketchup. And this is where my interest started, with the conversation I had with friends and family, talking about our favorite foods. We started theorizing about the history of our favorite foods. That began the quest my quest for the truth of ketchup's history. And today, I'll be sharing with you the long, colorful, but interesting evolution of ketchup, the interesting history of ketchup's evolution to what we love today, with three main points. Ketchup's origins, thousands of recipes, and Heinz monopolization. <laughs> <clears throat> According to the YouTuber, The History Guy, the word ketchup originates from the Vietnamese word kicha, simply meaning fish sauce. The first documented recipe was in northern Vietnam in 544 AD. China and the Philippines also had their own words for the sauce, but what it was made of was the big difference in these country sauces. Well, in Vietnam, it was made of fermented fish and shark guts, but it was made of soybeans in China. The question is, how did it get from southern Asia to America? Well, it was discovered by the East, East Indies Trading Company in 1711, when they noticed a large amount of quiche being sold. The British merchant Charles Lockyer reported in the, account of, in the account of the trade of India that the best ketchup comes from Tonkin in northern Vietnam. <clears throat> and because it was fermented, sailors were, were able to take it back where it was happily adopted by British cooks. But they didn't keep the fish guts because, well, the British are picky. And because they didn't have any soybeans, they began to experiment with all kinds of different ingredients. Which brings me to my second point, thousands of recipes. So in the endeavor to avoid fermented fish entrails as a sauce, they got very creative and used everything, and I mean everything, but tomatoes. At first they used canned anchovies mixed with beer, and it was even known that the stronger and staler the beer, the better the ketchup. Eliza Smith's 1727 book, The Complete Housewife, had a recipe for ketchup that required a pint of the best white wine vinegar, shallots, ginger, mushrooms, along with the pre-stated pre -stated anchovies. But there was no one way to make ketchup, and the recipes varied from household to household. And because of this varying taste, it was made up, made up of things like cherries, oysters, blackberries, mushrooms, walnuts, peaches, lemons, and even mangoes. Walnut ketchup was a favorite of Jane Austen. And I bet you're wondering why no one was using tomatoes yet. Well, tomatoes were brought to the Americas either by Cortez in 1520... Wait. Uh, brought from the Americas either by Cortez in 1521 or possibly earlier by Columbus. But, jo but botanist John Gerard, author of the leading botany book, The Herb, claimed that they were poisonous because of their close relation to the nightshade berry, even though they were eaten in Italy and Spain. At the time, the Spaniards and Italians were having food poisoning problems, but we now know it was because of the pewter plates that they used that had a high lead content. So tomatoes aren't poisonous, but because of the book's popularity, it kept many of the populace from using the fruits and the recipes. The first appearance of tomato ketchup was in, 17, in the 1758 book, Art of Cookery by Hannah Glass. It still included half a pad of anchovies and walnuts. But it wasn't until the early 1800s that tomato ketchup started to get popular because of, because of Ohio physician Cook Bennett declare that tomatoes could cure a plethora of illnesses, such as indigestion, diarrhea, jaundice, rheumatism, and even as went as far to say that it could prevent cholera. But this was all from a man who made a medical diploma mill where he would sell medical degrees for $10 in the 1820s. <laughs> and even if the people believed him, he wasn't the first to talk about it. Thomas Jefferson records that his friend Dr. James Disaquaria thought if someone eat an abundance of these fruits, they would never die. <clears throat> but the idea that tomatoes could cure illnesses got so popular 
a patent medicine seller named Archibald Miles met Bennett in 1836 and soon after started to sell Dr. Miles extract of tomato pills. And because of Bennett's claims, popularity in the pills became so great that a tomato pill war began between Miles and a medical competitor. But it would later come out in newspapers that neither pill had any tomato in them. <laughs> if tomato ketchup was made, it was in, in the if tomato ketchup was made, it was in small batches by farmers or families that wanted to add a little flavor to meals. <clears throat> but in 1836-7, a man named Jonas Yurt started to sell tomato ketchup by the court. <laughs> Jonas Yurt started to sell tomato ketchup in bottles by the court and pint, which had never been done before. Others tried to follow Yurt's, but all of them found the same problem selling ketchup commercially. With the short growing seasons, especially in the north, it required them to store giant vats of tomato pulp to be used year-round. But because of the carelessness of the stores, the misdate of vats became infested with yeast spores and mold. <clears throat> it gets worse. Some of the ketchups were sold well, some of the ketchup sold were byproducts of tomato canning, where they would make ketchup from pieces of tomato they swept off the floor. It doesn't end there either. They would cook the ketchup in copper tubs which make it, would make it highly toxic. The makers made up for these failings by adding preservatives like boric and silicic acid, and then added coal tar to dye the yellow parts red. In 1896, a study of commercial ketchup said that over 90% of ketchups add, quote, injurious ingredients. It was 1860 when Henry J. Hines and a friend formed the Hines and Noble Company. Their first product was horseradish in transparent bottles so buyers could see the quality. The company became very popular but went bankrupt in the panic of 1873. Three years later, he formed the Heinz and Noble Company with a brother and a cousin. Their first product was tomato ketchup, spelled catsup. Now, neither spelling was standard in the 1800s, but British imports used ketchup with a K. Well, American brands use catsup with a C. It was thanks to Heinz's decision to later use ketchup with a K that made it the standard from then on. Heinz's ketchup was by design different. It had the same preservatives and coal tar, but he used Elmbark to stabilize it. He also took inspiration from German ketchups, which used a mix of vinegar and sugar, which made a sweet and sour taste. He also used more modern ingredients, like xanthan gum, to make it a lot thicker, like the one we know today. Hans was also very kind to his workers, offering health insurance, gymnasiums, and even an on-site manicurist. <clears throat> he would open the factories to public tourists to show the cleanliness of the company, which Heinz thought would help with public trust, which it in turn did. <clears throat> Heinz then became a leader in the safe food manufacturing movement, and would develop a preservative-free ketchup that only used vinegar and salt. And it is the same ketchup recipe that we use to this day. It was thanks to, <clears throat> it was, in conclusion, it was Heinz's success, success that made tomato ketchup the most famous condiment in the world for decades. I'll end with a quote you can find at the back of most Heinz's ketchup bottles. For over 150 years, Heinz has provided the thick, rich ketchup that America loves. Every variety of Heinz's ketchup is grown, not made. When it comes to ketchup, it has to be Heinz. <laughs>